if there are questions, this is the time to ask them. But I want to appeal once again that we, are, we must be in strict compliance with the rule that we have in this house. That only specific items mentioned in the communique can attract questions here. This is not a general uh, press conference. Please, if you have any questions, if there is one at all, you can just walk up to this place and tell us your name and then ask one question, please. Okay, just one question, that's good. Good afternoon. My name is Obi Nachima. This is the newspaper. Governor, you talked about the need for a fiscal policy. You talked about in your, in your projection, you said um, there's need for the ERGP to be sustained. And um, in the next few days, we know the cabinet will be resolved, will be dissolved. If you are to advise the president as one of his advisors, how soon will you advise them to constitute a new cabinet? Considering the fact that whatever you do from the monetary policy side needs the complementary push from the fiscal authorities. Thank you. Um, Chief Mrs. Nancy Ilu Naji. Thank you, Mr. Isaac. Good afternoon, Governor. Um, taking a cue from what you said, I would like to know specifically what you mean when you said that the MPC uh, is signaling to the banks uh, against government securities because we know what happens when a lot of them now go to, to buy treasury bills and all of that, so discouraging uh, credit delivery. A system. Then you also talked about your MPC is considering a proposal to speed up the recovery of loans. I would like to understand that further. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, okay. Governor, good afternoon. <laughs> Congratulations on your second term. Um, you said the MPL is beyond the provincial level, level in the economy. How bad is it? MPLs. Oh, how good. Good afternoon, uh, Governor. We know much more from business day. Okay, um, Governor, in your speech, uh, you did mention, or you again called on government to uh, build buffers, but this time around you're asking um, them to do this through a, what you call realizable budget benchmark. Just wanted to know what um, realistic, sorry, realistic budget benchmark. Just wanted to know in your sense, you know, what a realistic budget benchmark you know, should be at this time, considering the outlook and risk. Thank you. Well, let me have a budget, let me have a benchmark. Governor, sir. Current benchmark, do you have it? Thank you. Yeah, for budget. Well, um, thank you very much. Um, first, before I, I begin to make comments uh, or respond to these questions, I think it's very important that I seize this opportunity to thank Nigerians, particularly members of the press, for their support in the last four years, four or five years. Your support has been extremely immeasurable. If you recall that the latter part of 2015 into 2016 and 17 were very difficult for the Nigerian economy and by extension the monetary policy authorities and the fact that you have shown a lot of faith, giving us the chance, showing understanding in the way that we have approached monetary policy uh, direction for the country, we say thank you so much for all this. We would continue to crave your support, your understanding, uh, like you have done in the past. Um, yes, at this time, we've seen what we can call a relative 
um, improvement in macroeconomic variables in Nigeria, exchange rate being stable, reserves looking good, inflation moderating downwards. But it's also important for me to say that there are still challenges ahead. If we consider that notwithstanding the improvement in macroeconomic variables, that inflation still has its own pressures arising for issues burdening on prices and supply, supply shortages for food, issues bordering on unemployment and the need for us to think about how to diversify our economy. I would say the challenges ahead are still enormous, but we will need your support. In this next phase, there will be a need for us to, to aggressively be thinking about how do, we, how do we improve the level of employment and reduce unemployment in our country. I must confess that yes, there is a relationship between an improved, between employment level and improved economy and the level of security in the country. So we all have to work together. Those who are making life difficult for people to go to their farms to be able to produce or to do, conduct their farming activities, we seize opportunity to please appeal to them, to please allow our farmers, particularly in the food produce, producing belts in the country who are currently affected, to please allow these farmers to go to farms. When people go to farm, they get employed because they can sell their farm produce, they can feed their family and employ other people, and when they do so, ultimately reduces the level of insecurity in our country. A lot of work needs to be done. We need to consolidate on the growth that we have right now that is fragile. The economy growing at 2% is sub-optimal if we consider the fact that this country's population grows at an average of about 2.7% per annum. And the fact that, and you may have heard me in some, in recently talking about the fact that it is saddening that Nigeria will be the third largest populated country in the world in 2050, um, even, even, even higher than America, but following India and China, or China and India, it's not a good story. But what it also means is that we have a lot of work to do to be able to feed and provide food, to be able to employ the mass of people that will be created, as it were. Now, responding specifically to questions that have been, that have been asked, that there is a need that, that in the report that I said that there is a need for the economic recovery and growth plan to be sustained, and that I should advise Mr. President uh, about uh, expediting the reconstitution of the Executive Council. Well, it's important for me to say that here, the decision to reconstitute or appoint ministers, I must, I must confess I don't have all the details, but I do know that it's not an easy one, given the fact that the president must go through uh, finding suitable and hardworking people that can, that can work for the country from at least the 36 states of the country. It's not an easy task. But I am optimistic that since you have called for it, that you will get what you want. <laughs> AIT said, MPC is signaling to the banks against federal government securities. Yes. The truth is that yes, um, according to our own regulations, there's a particular minimum um, percentage of um, a percentage of treasury bills or treasury securities or government securities that the banks must invest in order to remain liquid. But again, we have observed, and, and unfortunately so, and increasingly so, that the banks, rather than even focusing on granting credit even to the private sector, they tend to, they tend to direct their focus mainly in buying government securities. The Monetary Policy Committee has, is, has frowned at that and has directed the management of the central bank to put in place policies or regulations that will restrict the banks from um, unlimited um, I say, access to, to government securities. It is important and expedient that, we, that, this, that the committee gives this directive to management because this country badly needs growth. For, you to, for us to achieve growth, 
those whose primary responsibility that it is to provide credit, who act as intermediaries in providing credit and, 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 and accord a catalyst to credit and growth in the economy, must be seen to perform that responsibility. And that they would, rather than perform that responsibility to the private sector that is the engine of growth of an economy, instead of doing that, that they will be directing their liquidity to other sectors um, of the economy is what the MPC France at and has therefore given the management the power to think of what can we do to limit their, their propensity or their appetite for just going for government securities rather than just rather than uh, directing credit to the private sector of the economy. Management will certainly take this up and will think of how to do that. We do know that banks, and, in, and this is related to the issue of MPL that somebody raised, we do know that banks have always expressed some, some um, um, resistance to increasing or to increasing credit, creation of credit to, to the private sector given the past experiences about NPL that result from this. And hence the MPC themselves has also directed management that we should think about administrative, legal and regulatory framework to be put in place to ensure that some of the credit risks that are associated with granting loans to the private sector that ultimately results in NPLs should be mitigated such that when banks decide to begin to lend to private sector or increasingly that the, the probability that NPLs will rise should not should, should be minim should be moderated. The MPs also felt that the consumer credit and the mortgage credit market must be catalyzed in Nigeria. That one of the one of the in, inhibiting factors to growth is the fact that we have not been able to effectively um, jumpstart the consumer credit and mortgage credit businesses in Nigeria or lending in Nigeria, and the management of the bank will think of how to put in place regulations that will assist people or banks in ensuring that credit, uh, consumer credit is, um, is, um, is improved again um, in Nigeria. In different parts of economy, in different parts of the world, people go to the shops and they should be able to buy things on credit. Buy things on credit, when you buy those things on credit, what it does is that if you have some liquidity, say you have five naira and you want to buy something for 10 naira, what it does, it, it improves aggregate demand. When it increases demand, that can meet the supply, the dormant supply, because we have dormant supply, what you will find is that it will catalyze the economy, it will also catalyze productivity and grow the economy, and then we can begin to see GDP begin to attain the kind of historical level that Nigeria has always been at. That we are going to take up, given that the MPC has given management that mandate. And we will aggressively, and we we'll think of ways. We are going to hold very informed and strategic decisions with discussions and engagement with deposit money banks, because they are very, very important. They are anchored to growth, and we will make them understand that they must play this role that is expected um, of them. Um, yeah, he asked about how bad is the is the loan. Well, if you recall, the prudential is that. Banks should have maximum of 5% in NPLs. Um, I must say that at this time it's about 9-10% on the average, which is a significant improvement from where it was a year or two ago. About a year or two ago, it was close to 15 to 17 percent. And moderating to 10%, I would say is a substantial and significant and encouraging improvement in the level of NPLs. And I do think that with the steps that will be taken by the central bank to support the banks, I use the word, through administrative, legal, and regulatory framework that certainly we will see to it that NPLs are brought down so that deposit money banks can be encouraged to go back and begin to lend money more aggressively to those sectors that they consider uh, to, be, to, be, to be risky. Um, the last one is on the budget benchmark. Well, um, I see the oil, oil benchmark, I've been told, is about $60 to buy that has been provided. Okay? 
I mean, that has been budgeted for, for at 2.3 million barrels per day. Now that price is almost at 70, what we are saying is that there is no need to begin to think of let us spend if we make more money and so increase the budget benchmark from 60 maybe to 69 or 70 because you believe um, that price is good. What that does, the buffer between, for instance, 72 or 74 that it is right now and 60, if you realize the money, save it and build buffer for a rainy day when it does happen. Thank you very much.